This video is part of a series of exam question walkthroughs looking at the methods for the AQA A-level chemistry required practical activities. This question is looking at part B of required practical 7, in which you measure the rate of a reaction by a continuous monitoring method. Before we walk through this question together, pause the video and have a go at answering it yourself. Remember, this is going to be a six mark question, so you want to be spending about six minutes on it and you need to make sure that you cover all aspects of the question. So here it says the experimental steps and the data analysis, and you need to include both of those in your answer. So this question doesn't actually make any reference to the fact that it's about continuous monitoring. It doesn't tell you that explicitly in the question, but it's obviously about rates of reaction because we're going to need rates of reaction in order to be able to deduce partial orders. And so your two options are either you're going to be measuring an initial rate or you're going to be measuring continuously. And so the clue here is that we've got a gas being produced and therefore we're going to use a gas syringe to collect the gas and we're going to be doing that over the course of the reaction. In any investigation where we're trying to deduce the partial order with respect to one of the reactants, we don't want the concentration of the other reactants to change. But of course, during a chemical reaction, they are going to change because they're going to be used up. So it's really important that wherever you're investigating partial order, that everything else is in massive excess. So we don't have a second reactant here, but we do have a catalyst. And we want to make sure that we're adding enough of that catalyst that even when a bit of it gets used up, there's still far more than we need. And this is effectively going to make it zeroth order with respect to this catalyst. Now let's talk about how to actually set this experiment up. So as with all of your required practicals, you want to be being really precise about the volumes and the masses that you're using. So we're not going to use a measuring cylinder here. We're going to use a burette to measure the volume of our hydrogen peroxide. Or you could use a volumetric pipette as well. That would be fine. And we're going to add a sensible volume, something like 50 centimetres cubed of hydrogen peroxide. Bear in mind that most gas syringes only have a capacity of something like 100 centimetres cubed, so you don't want a reaction that's going to produce more gas than that because you wouldn't be able to collect it. Now, you don't need to specify a concentration, but a sensible concentration would be something like 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed. Um, that might be kind of um, giving you a bit of cognitive dissonance if you're thinking, I don't remember that being the concentration that I used. Um, in the real world, when we use hydrogen peroxide, we never actually give it a concentration. We label it in terms of vol, which is how much oxygen it will produce. Um, but one vol, which is what you would have used for this reaction, is approximately equal to 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed. It's something like 0.08. So that's about the same. So that's how much um, hydrogen peroxide we've got. And we're going to put that into a conical flask. And the reason it needs to be a conical flask um, rather than, say, a beaker is because we need to be able to um, close the opening and collect the gas. And you obviously can't do that if you've got a very large aperture. Next, we're going to add our catalyst. And strictly speaking, we don't really care how much there is as long as there's a really, really large excess. But I would say that whenever you talk about measuring a mass in A-level chemistry, it's always worth leading with using a high precision balance, even if you don't really need one, because just if you get into that habit, you're not going to forget it when it is important. So we're going to use our high precision balance to measure out a gram of manganese dioxide, which is way more than you need. It's, it's really significant excess, and therefore the concentration is effectively going to not change during the reaction and we can just disregard it when we're um, looking at the impact of the changing concentration of um, the hydrogen peroxide throughout the reaction. Now we need to get the catalyst into the hydrogen peroxide but also attach this gas syringe and it's all a bit fiddly so the way that I tend to describe this is talk about setting up your bung that has a delivery tube going through it and that's attached to the gas syringe and then you can imagine you're there with the bung in one hand the catalyst on a spatula in or in a weighing boat in the other hand and you're ready to put everything into the conical flask in one go so you're going to add the catalyst to the conical flask immediately insert the bung so you're not losing any of the gas that is evolved and start the stopwatch and then every 10 seconds you're going to write down how much gas has been released until either the gas syringe is full or a sensible amount of time has passed so you might say something like two minutes or 100 seconds or whatever it is now, the moles of oxygen that are going to be produced are going to be half of the moles of hydrogen peroxide that are being used up. So this is important because it means that by knowing how much gas is produced, we can work out how quickly the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide is changing. And this is going to be important for the analysis that we're going to go on and do. So say you figure out 
oh, there's been 10 centimetres cubed of gas evolved. That's this many moles of oxygen has been produced. Therefore, this many moles of hydrogen peroxide have been used up. OK, so originally I had this many moles in solution. Now I've got this many moles um, have been used up. So how many moles are left over? Therefore, what's the new concentration? And when you've done all of that, that allows you to um, calculate your concentration of hydrogen peroxide for each of the time points that you've got. And once you've got that information, you can plot your concentration on the y axis against your time. So you can see how that's changing, how that's dropping over time. And then you can draw a tangent at each of those time points to work out what is the rate of reaction at each of those concentrations throughout the reaction. So we're not doing a series of experiments here where we actively change the concentration and just look at the initial rate, which is kind of what you would have done at GCSE and what you might have done in other parts of the A-level. What we're doing here is examining one reaction and seeing how the rate changes through that reaction as the concentration changes through that reaction. So now you've got two options in terms of analysis. One is that you just do it numerically. So you say, OK, so if the concentration of hydrogen peroxide doesn't affect the rate at all, then it's zeroth order. If as the concentration halves, the rate halves its first order. If as the concentration halves, the rate quarters, then it's second order. The problem with doing it this way is that it relies on the fact that at some point during that reaction, you're going to have a concentration that was half of the starting concentration. And that's going to have happened at one of those time points that you've measured it. Um, I mean, it doesn't need to be perfect because you can draw a line of best fit, a nice smooth curve through all your points. But if you don't happen to luck out and have the concentration dropping from 0.1 at this point to 0.05 at this point, then it could be a little bit tricky to do that. So the other way we can do this is graphically. So having worked out all of those concentrations and worked out all of those rates by drawing tangents, instead of just looking at the numbers, we can solve this graphically. So you're going to plot a graph, which is the concentration on the x-axis against the rate on the y-axis. So concentration we've done by looking at the oxygen evolved and rate we've done from the tangents. And so you've got three options here. One is that the rate remains unchanging throughout the reaction. Remember, this um, this graph doesn't have time anywhere on it. These are just the concentrations and the rates, which do correspond to different time points, but they're not shown on the graph. So if the rate is always the same rate and it doesn't change throughout the reaction, then um, we're zero order with respect to the hydrogen peroxide. If, on the other hand, the um, the concentration and the rate have a directly proportional linear relationship, then this is first order. Again, remember this graph does not have time on it, so I'm not suggesting here that the rate is increasing throughout the reaction. Actually, the concentration would be dropping, so we'd be going backwards down this graph, and that's something that tends to confuse people, so just try and keep that one straight in your head. Um, and then, of course, our third option is that we get this exponential relationship between rate and concentration. Um, sorry, that's a bit of a badly drawn graph, but never mind. Um, in which case, it's second order. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you're now feeling a bit more confident about required practical activity 7. Don't forget to also watch the 7a video which looks at initial rate monitoring rather than continuous monitoring. If you are finding these videos useful then don't forget to like and subscribe for more A-level chemistry content coming soon.